Hey everybody, it's me again. Um, I had such a great response from my first video that I thought I would do another one. Um, a different medium on the Yupo paper. This is actually um, Aztec gouache. Um, I had um, a piece that I was just kind of playing around with once I got a new set of gouache paints from Aztec and I thought to myself, um, I haven't really done anything with this. Let me just play around and try molding this piece. So I started cutting up the paper in different sizes and thought this would be a nice trial um, since I have not tried sculpting any pieces um, yet with the gouache substrate versus um, the alcohol ink medium. One of the first things I realized right off the bat was that the gouache burns a lot faster than the alcohol ink. Um, so you have to be really quick, really careful. Um, you, it's not as forgiving, um, interestingly enough, with compared to the alcohol ink being on top of the Yupo paper. So I also decided this time around I would use a much larger sheet of the Yupo paper, which I typically do not do. I usually do smaller sheets and then layer them on top of one another to make a larger piece. Um, but um, this time around, I thought I would try a larger piece of Yupo first um, and trying to manipulate that with the butane torch um, and then kind of seeing how this one turned out. So that is what you're seeing now is me just playing around with this larger sheet of Yupo with watercolor gouache on top of it and moving it around and trying to see how it wants to stick. Another thing I found interesting is that it takes a little bit longer for the Yupo to set with gouache compared to the alcohol ink. Um, with the alcohol ink, it seems to set a bit faster. With the gouache, it seems to take a little bit more time to set in the uh, manner that I usually want it to. So you have to be a little bit more patient if you decide to use gouache as a color material versus an alcohol ink. Another thing you may notice compared to my last video I do have to put down my butane torch a lot more um, than I'm used to doing. I usually try to work with the butane torch in hand while manipulating the piece and not trying to put it down as much. However, when you do um, produce the larger pieces with a larger sheet, you just have to put down the butane torch. Um, it's just too much to handle and there's just no way to hold um, that piece along with the larger sheet of paper. However, it did come out really cool, definitely very three-dimensional. And I then decided to use a little bit of a smaller piece, still kind of large compared to what I'm used to um, for the next layer. Um, I did something a little different. I decided to score the paper and cut a little, a few pieces um, to cause a little fringe effect wasn't really sure what that was going to do and I learned very 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 quickly um, that the pieces became very very thin um, and very difficult to maneuver and manipulate in that sheet size so in a little bit you're going to see that I actually cut that sheet in half um, it just made using and manipulating the paper um, a lot easier and a lot more successful I think than if I continued doing this in this way. So this is when I had a bit of an aha moment with these um, 
cut pieces that I did, I realized if I weaved them um, kind of in and out of each other and then started using the butane torch, this beautiful kind of interlaced um, form started to occur. And it was so beautiful and successful in this particular end piece that it's definitely going to be something that I explore in the future more and more. Um, but for someone personally, I, I, I work in textile design and I know weave structures and it was just something that kind of just came to me and just kind of doing this over and under. Um, if you bake, it's kind of like when you do the basket weave on top of a pie or just a simple over under um, structure that you find even when you're doing like kids crafts and what ended up happening was this this beautiful intricate um, structure that happened and I was really excited about it and I'm, it's definitely something that I'm going to play with more in the future and it was just kind of a, a happy accident which is something that happens a lot when I do these kind of 3D sculpture pieces there's a lot of happy accidents um, and I feel that if you just take your time and kind of play around and manipulate the Yupo paper, you'll, you'll end up having a lot of those moments and really learn the material and, and really appreciate all the real different types of forms that come out of it. Um, if you do not have patience, which I usually do not in real life, but for some reason when it comes to this, I get into a zone and I appreciate it. Um, you end up finding these really beautiful um, kind of odd magical forms that occur um, that you just you'll never be able to manipulate and be able to um, happen again it's just a one-of-a-kind piece that you know you'll never be able to recreate so to me it's something that's just very very special just felt some more yellow was necessary and I did have this very long strip that um, had this bright yellow form um, coloration in it and I wanted to just use it manipulate it and see what happened I'm realizing that when I hold it down like vertically like this it starts to elongate and cause some really beautiful um, circular um, and oval forms to occur in the Yupo paper so that's why you see me starting to utilize it more and more in this manner. There is going to be a moment where I actually drop a piece of hot Yupo on my leg and it is a bit painful. Um, I did light the Yupo a little bit longer on fire. That does not usually occur with the alcohol ink. So I think since this was just a different uh, material on top of the Yupo paper, it just acted a little bit differently than what I'm accustomed to. Um, so once again, it's when you try different mediums, just be kind of mindful that it might be a bit different than what you are used to and that it can change and to just be careful of your surroundings and what you're working with. And I always keep a little bucket of water nearby in case anything does go up. I do have a paper towel underneath me, so you know, that could easily go on fire if any piece of the hot Yupo paper singes it. So I do try to keep mindful that things are flammable and that anything is possible to light on fire. You are using an open flame. So just kind of be smart about it and just, you know, be aware of your surroundings at all times. I am now starting to put together my kind of heart piece, as I like to call these. And what's kind of great, as I've said in my previous video, is they do just start to fall into place with one another. 
I do sometimes when I'm starting to put these together, like mani manipulate some of the pieces afterwards if I feel like some areas are too thick or too thin um, so they fit in properly. I did end up doing that with this piece here, just the end of it, I really didn't really do much with. Um, so I did have to go back in with the butane torch, just kind of thin it out so it fit in properly in the front area. And what, as soon as I did that, like I'm doing here now, it just perfectly fit in to where I wanted it to go. So you could really see that yellow pop off of the purplish blue color that you see um, as they are contrasting colors and they really just made everything just fit right. And as soon as I did that, you know, everything wanted to fall into place. Like everything just wanted to glue together right. Everything wanted to sit properly. So I was very happy with making that decision to kind of trim down that end of that yellow piece so it would fit in properly on top of the heart. This final piece was another one that I was kind of playing around with if I did want it or if I didn't, and then I realized it too needed just to be just slightly modified to fit in kind of where I just wanted just a little bit of that extra yellow color to come through, almost like a feather in the cap, if you would say, of the heart. So you just visually have this yellow movement going across um, the heart itself. So it just didn't feel like it just stopped and you just kind of have this just feeling of movement through this across this three third three dimensional piece there we go so you even see me cutting off a little piece of the bottom i did that just so it wouldn't be fighting where i wanted it to go and as soon as i did that it just popped in i mean i really didn't even have to put any glue down but i felt the need i like to just put a little bit of hot glue just so i know it's structurally sound and when i do go to mount it um, like the piece that you see on my easel behind me that I just know that everything is just gonna be safe and not um, dismantle at any time for any reason. And here you go, the final piece. So thank you guys, check it out and I hope you guys enjoyed it and if you have any questions always just let me know. Thanks again.